Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beer Review. So today we're going back over to the homebrew. Uh, I've now labelled up all my bottles so I know what's in them. Um, and I didn't have to do no taste testing. Although I've got some impies down there and I ain't got a clue what's in them. So is what it is on that side of things. So I opened this last night so I know what's in it. And this is my... It worked out in the end of 13% cherry imperial stout so i've got to remember what i put in it in there two muntons milk stout kits uh they come with a ton of lactose um and then i added was it four or five bags of sugar was originally supposed to come out at, i was hoping it was going to come out at 16 it topped out at 13 13 not bad though you know in the grand scheme of things um, I'll give it a shake so you can see the head. They got quite a dark tan head on this. The aroma, oh gosh. I, I had a nightcap last night because I was, I was knackered after taking bloody green asses down. And today I've been building green asses. Oh, what bloody bliss. Um, pores are really thick paw. Literally no head on that. Um, a treat for another night. Hey, hey. Gotta have your treats. Can't have a treat in life. What's the, what's the life about? So yeah, thirteen percent cherry imperial stout, uh, black cherry imperial stout actually. I was given it by the master brewer, not head brewer, master brewer, over at Lincoln Green Brewing Company. So he was. Um, and if you look on Lincoln Green's website, I'm sure it tells you details. And I can't remember his name. Uh, my memory's crap anyway. So, you know, it is what it is on that side of things. I don't remember half the names at work. And I work with them most days. Um, a little or half them, I couldn't care less, but there you go. Uh, but anyway. So, Gary. I'm sure his name's Gary. It's a pity they didn't have me over for another, another beer. Collab, but I think all the breweries locally have gave up on this, so it is what it is, you know. Um, we're not in COVID anymore, you know, and uh, they're all trying to survive in COVID, collab, COVID rather. And some bloke doing beer reviews of their beers in bottles and cans, they loved it. These days, I don't think they're bothered. Um, that is what it is. But anyway, yeah, so he, he, we, we went to the Lincoln Green Beer Festival and uh, went on the brewery tour, a really informative brewery tour, very different. A lot of brewery, the very same, the very samey brewery tour was on, but the detail that we went into was exquisite. Um, the knowledge, you know, um, I think he was the, the original brewer of Doombar. And I know Doombar these days is an abomination. And now it's mass produced at Molson Coors. Not the not Charlotte's Brewery anymore. Um, and Charlotte's Brewery are probably owned by Molson Coors, I assume. I don't know. Uh, that is beyond me. I don't really care either. But he was the original brewer of Doombar. So back in the day, like the likes. It's funny really because you get these beers like Doombar. Hobgoblin, Bombardier, and so on, that were the king beers. Then what's happened over the years, breweries have come along, took over the breweries, um, like Marston's, and they've just ruined what was a fantastic beer back in the day. But anyway, on the brewery tour, we've got talking at the end. Um... Really knowledgeable bloke, and uh, he gave me some black cherry flavouring. It's out of date, but it's been kept in uh, a fridge at like silly temperatures in this fridge. I'm not sure if it was a freezer or a fridge. I think it had been a fridge, but it was a bloody cold fridge. I bought it and chucked it in our fridge, and then I brewed the beer. So two lots of Montons milk stout um, kit and. Um, All that sugar 
and uh, the Muntons flagship kits. I absolutely rate them. Um, it was a flipping lively beer. It was supposed to be 24 litres. I lost four litres. Four litres! Because it was so lively. Basically, what I needed was a much bigger fermentation bucket. I'm talking 40 or 50 litre bucket instead of a the 30 litre that I had. Because as it rose up, and then it would have rose back down, and I wouldn't have lost any. But it is what it is. It was in the bath, it made a right mess. <laughs> Walked into the bathroom, it looked like someone had shited all over the bathroom. And it looked, I mean, it had been nice, nice shite, to be fair. But, um, so, here we are. That's the backstory. Beautiful cherry aroma. And you know it's slightly different. The black cherry is a bit more, got a bit more to it than normal cherry. So room temperature. There's plenty of cherry going off there. You know you've got the cherry. I've got the cherry baby. Cherry cherry baby. Um, but that it's thick. Mountain's flagship milk stout. I've got to be honest. If you get it. You ever see it on offer like I did, half price? Fucking buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Brew two together. Get some yeast as well to help out with, you know, get some get some big yeast. Even if you have to get the spirit yeast like Alcatec or, you know, uh, yeast that goes up to 24 uh, percent. Get that. Because the, the standard yeast that comes with it will impart flavour. That yeast will burn the sugar. But it's got a lovely thickness to it. So the thickness comes from the lactose, which gives it cream, but obviously also from the unfiltered sugars, which is also lactose, uh, that didn't get filled to that. So it thickens it up. And I learned that from Mr. Brid Brewer and Tap Room. So cheers, mate. Um, see you soon. Uh, I want to see the regulars and... Uh, his good lady's daughter, so. If he watches these videos, I don't know. Who knows? I don't know who watches videos and who don't. Uh, I know that over the years, people's names and faces, names I remember commenting, uh, come and go. Um, obviously everyone's got a life. Watching some grey-haired or white-haired person, I need to get a haircut, you waffle on about beers, so you'll pick your beer reviews and you'll pick the ones that interest you, I understand that, uh, I've never been a viral beer reviewer, I'm, I've never been anything like real ale craft beer, um, do I compare myself to these other beer reviewers, I'm very different, very different, um, are any of them better, I don't know, and I'm not really bothered either. Uh, I do beer reviewing for my reasons. Uh, one, a cheeky beer down the shed. Two, it helps me talk about my day at work and, you know, gives a bit of reality. And uh, we all see what we see in life. And I've seen a lot, <laughs> funnily enough. But anyway, here we go. It smells amazing. It's not too powerful. I was a bit worried because Gary, um, the head brewer, I hope his name's Gary, otherwise I'm calling somebody the wrong name. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably bump into him. My, mate, my name's Trevor, mate, not bloody Gary. <laughs> Imagine somebody watching the review and saying, I watched that review of a raggy and uh, he's, he's called you Trevor or Gary. And uh, fuck if his name was Fred. But uh, in any case, they had the master brewer that I do know. Because I've not come across many master brewers. I've come across head brewers, which basically anybody who owns a brewery and is the only brewer, or two, that they're the head brewer or managing brewer. But a master brewer, now that's something different. Um, it's a bit like gardening back in the day. We had uh, a Trainee garden, YTS gardeners, 
train your gardeners, apprentice gardeners, gardeners, groundsman gardener and craftsman gardener. I was, at the end, a craftsman gardener. Uh, these days I'm just a bloody lackey. But um, <laughs> um, and luckily I've I seen the, the best days of the councils uh, when we had good budgets, lots of arseholes, there was always arseholes, lazy buggers, there was always lazy buggers, but at one time we had good managers and good charge hands who actually were charge hands because they knew what they were doing and they had the skill set. Then it became the, the, the world of um, people who were mates of a mate and who got the job just solely because they were mates, not because they knew anything about real gardening. And uh, that was in 1990 when our charge and left, and then we started getting, you know, idiots in charge. And, you know, the laziest people. And a lot of the time they just left me to it because one, I was trained by the best and I knew what I was doing. Anyway, back on with the beer. A slight tangent, as tangents go. I forgot that much over the years. Bloody hell, if I could remember all the stuff. Jesus Christ. Oh. It's super smooth. It's thick. It's got a cherry, a black cherry aroma. It's got a black cherry taste. It's an absolute treat of an imperial stout. Uh, you can see the late, you can see the legs at the top where it, where where I poured it, um, and it's still got the legs. Oh, and I can feel the ABV as well. Yeah, shan't be drinking any more than that. I'm going to run through all the beers. I've got seven different beers in a homebrew. Um, plus I've got a couple of extra ones that I can't remember what they are cause, until I open the bottle. Um, so I'm going to go through them all. I've got um, brewing to come up on the channel. Some f from a homebrew perspective, quite a few bits and bobs coming up. Um, three beer kits I'm going to choose. I need to uh, run them in the house later after this beer review and I've cooked dinner. Um, I need to just verify what kits I'm going to go for. One's definitely a St. Peter's IPA. One's definitely a Mon oh, the Munton's flagship West Coast IPA. Because that's 7%, so ooh, get in. Uh, but the last kit, I'm not sure. Uh, it might be St. Peter's Ruby Red, because I do fancy brewing that again. Keeping the ABV as is. Just brewing it, and same with the St. Peter's IPA, keeping it as is. Um, and possibly the same on the um, Muntons, just keeping it to that 7%, because it's the first time I brewed it, so I want to see what it's like. And then I want to see another time, putting a bag of sugar in or a bag of malt in, and seeing if I can um umph the ABV up. But um, yeah, sometimes it's nice to actually brew, and just to see if the beer comes out okay. That's this, that will be this month's um, exploration in, into the world of uh, brewing. So, like I said on other, other uh, videos, I'm doing a, every two months, two or three beers, two or three kits. It'll keep the beer room nicely topped up for, for, for me. If I want to drink and I don't want to drink, I do, do a beer review. But it also... It's nice to it's nice to go back and try the beers after a few months. This has been about a month and a half now, maybe two months, um, and it's it's um, it's maturing nicely. Yeah, um, like I say, I'm ultra pleased with the Montans kits. Um, even if you bought two Montans kits. 
and the flavouring. Um, you know, if it costs you 70 quid to brew a 13% impy stout, but an impy stout that you're not spending five hours brewing, you're spending about 40 minutes of brewing, and you've got to think these hours, you know, it's all right doing the brewing, but then you've got the risk of it not bloody working out. And then uh, the only thing I find with all grain brewing is whatever you think you're going to get, you don't bloody get. Um, I suppose I better I need to improve my sparging on that and just keep putting the keep putting the um, hydrometer in just to make sure that I'm getting uh, as best as I can. So, mm. so um, that is an amazing beer. 15 minutes, wow, that knock off. Um, the cherry's lovely. It's not too high on the cherry. Not as bad as the woman raisin last year. That was really powerful, that was. But it certainly delivers an amazing beer. Oh, I, put, I feel proper chilled. Uh, lovely and chilled for the night. I dare say in the morning I'll be on the toilet literally about an hour after I get up. Uh, it's got the greatest um, laxative in the world, I think. Um, would I brew it again? Yeah, yeah. I'd brew that using two kits, sugar and essence, than piss about brewing all grain. Because by the time you pay for the all grain, which is over 50 quid, over 50 quid, uh, and possibly more than 50 quid, possibly 60 quid to get that ABV, I can do this. And for a, a, even at full price, 70 quid. When you, when you factor in sugar and essence, 70 quid. 24, 25 litres of 13% impy stout. That's easy to brew. Less hassle. It's got to be the winner. So would I do it again? Hell yes. Out of five. A good 4.6 out of five. If I'm reviewing my own beer. Cheers. <laughs>